الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله in this current time in which we're inflicted by widespread ignorance we're, infli we're afflicted by uh, extremism and all kind of new ideologies which assault Islam from uh, externally and from within and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said من أحدث في أمرنا هذا ما ليس منه فهو رد. He said that whoever innovates in this affair of ours will have it rejected. Meaning that innovation, that bid'a, that new ideology, that new way of thinking will be rejected, and there will be no reward from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for that amal, for that ideology, or for that deed. And with that being the case, Ahabat of Allah, we hear constantly. from the youth especially and others about new ways of thinking about new ways of belittling the ulama I've heard countless times from all walks of life meaning from elders from people in their middle age and from people who are youth speaking ill of the ulama either saying that the ulama don't know that they have no knowledge or limiting their knowledge, their scope of their field of knowledge. They don't know how to deal with these new doubts. They don't know how to deal with evolution. They don't know how to deal with this. They don't know how to deal with that. If they don't know, then who who does know? Who is going to help us with our deen? Because it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact that they have been raised to a certain status is from Allah Azza wa Jal. And it's all throughout his book, which is his the Kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why there's no room for doubt. At the same, on the other hand, we do not raise the ulama or the scholars or the students or the du'at above their level. Everyone has a different level. They are on. They are tafawit. They are mutafawitin. They have different levels of knowledge. And there are those Allah Subhanahu wa Taala refers as the rasikhun fil ilm. You know, those who are well grounded in knowledge that they are the they are, they know the book and they know the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they understand the Masari with Mufasid, the harms and the benefits and they propagate it and they practice it. But as I said, there are those now who make it their aim, even if unintentionally, some of them, some of them perhaps unintentionally, and this has given them the benefit of the doubt, but they speak about the ulama and belittle the ulama so much. Say the ulama don't know. I can finally hard, hardly find a Salafi scholar who knows this. I can hardly find a scholar who could answer this. I have doubts. You should have doubts. Let's all rejoice in our doubts because we're going to have to figure this out on our own. We have all kind of ways that people speak ill about the ulama. But are you telling me that throughout the time, throughout history, Islam, the, the history of Islam, that there weren't contemporary issues in the time of the Salaf, they were contemporary for their time. And those after them, they were contemporary for their time. For example, the Salaf dealt with those who say the Quran was makhluk. But that was something before them, the Sahaba radiallahu and others didn't deal with that. But when that mas'ala came up from Ahl al-Bid'ah and Ahl al-Zandaqah, when they came up with new shubahat, new doubtful ways of uh, articulating things that those before them were unaware of and did not even deal with because this was from their philosophy, their ideology. So it was foreign to Islam. The Salaf dealt with what Islam was. And that's what you and I need to adhere to. We don't need to have an answer for every single doubt that comes up because often if you try to engage and every single doubt that comes up, you will open up a bab of either spreading evil or making mistake and speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without knowledge or opening up a can of worms that doesn't even need to be opened up. But rather, if you're firm in your faith, you don't have to entertain those things. How do we know that we should be going back to the, to the people of knowledge, even though these people say that, you know, the ulama don't know? The ulama don't know how our country is. Nam, 
We need scholars in our various countries. Yes, we need scholarship. However, that does not mean that those great scholars that we can't return back to them about those issues that we cannot deal with. They don't know our countries better than we do. No, that's not what we're saying. But we're saying, but they know the book and the sunnah better. And they know the sabila, the salaf al salih And they know the masalih wa mufasid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al-kareem, Allah Ta'ala says, and he, he shows us the importance of, of, of being the, 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 the fadl, the excellence of the people of knowledge. He said, are those who know equal to those who don't know? Verily, the, the people of knowledge, this is a reminder for them. This is a reminder for you that we're not on the level of the ulama. So we should not try to bring, take ourselves, meaning we should not think ourselves to be on their level. But we need the scholars because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has talked about their fadl. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions that akhsha min ibadihi al ulama, that the most who fear him subhanahu wa ta'ala are the ulama. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, tabarak wa ta'ala, mentions that they fear him more than anyone else. It's because of their knowledge and their practice of that knowledge. So that's why it's unbefitting to belittle the scholars. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al -kareem, and this is the, the that, that should nail it in the coffin for us and drive this point home. Qala subhana, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah raises those who believe from amongst you and those who are given knowledge meaning they have different levels they're not like the ones who are the, the person who has less knowledge they're not like the ignorant ones. They're not like the general Muslims. Everyone has a, a status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a different darajah. And they will have a different darajah in accordance with their knowledge and their practice. This is the, the way we should be thinking about the ulama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. It doesn't mean you need to go into the to, to more deeper philosophy. You don't need to have authenticity uh, taken from non-Muslims and secular sciences in order to prove your religion. Allah has given you a clear path. Ask the people of knowledge. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you. And we know that whenever there's a command, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us that that's an obligation in its origin. Unless other evidence shows that it's other than that. So Allah is commanding you to ask the people of knowledge. If you don't know, Allah is not commanding us to ask the people, ask our college professors, ask our the, the secularists. Let's take a, let's go into their sciences so we can understand their doubts and understand how to deal with it. That's not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us. He's asking us to go to the Rasikhun of Al Ilm, those people who are grounded in Islamic knowledge and can help us deal with our issues and deal with new issues and nawazil and, and contemporary masail and issues that come up. So Ahl Dhikr is the people of knowledge. So it's up to us to return back to them and be grounded in your faith. If you hear a person of doubt, be away from them. How many people have we seen and witnessed throughout our lifetime who've apostated from the religion of Islam because they couldn't deal with the doubts? They were reading things they shouldn't have. They were indulging in things they didn't have answers for and the answers weren't satisfactory to them, to their hearts. But the answers may have been satisfactory to Ahli Iman. And so they left Islam. I can name countless people I know who left Islam because, for various reasons, but often because of Shubahat and often because they Aslan 
We aren't people who grounded. One minute they're Tekfiri, one minute they're Sufi, one minute they're this group and they're this group until they eventually leave the, the religion. And the Salaf used to speak about this in some of their books and maybe at another time we'll mention some of those narrations. But getting back to the topic at hand, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ إِلَّا رِجَالٍ نُوهِيَا إِلَيْهِمْ فَسَلْ أَهْلِ ذِكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, and we uh, sent uh, from, uh, from before, we sent uh, from the people from before you only men who were revealed, who had uh, religious knowledge revealed to them. And then he subhanahu wa ta'ala commands, So ask the people of knowledge if you do not know. So this ayah here is also another illustration of the importance of religious knowledge and the importance of going back to the people of knowledge and not undercutting them, not undermining them so that the people are left in confusion. Listen, we're going to mention a beautiful statement, but let's go to the tafsir of this ayat. Imam Qurtubi, rahimullah ta'ala, says in his tafsir, he said, Qala ibn Abbas, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma, ahli dhikr, ahli Qur'an, wakil ahli al-ilm, wa ma'na mutaqarib. Ibn Abbas, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma, he said, that Ahlul Dhikr in this verse, you know, the people of remembrance or the the people, of, he said that the meaning is Ahlul Quran. They're the people of the Quran. This is Ahlul Dhikr, meaning that they make the the best Dhikr, which is the Quran. And then he said, and it is also said, meaning it's also uh, an explanation of who Ahlul Dhikr are uh, is. He said uh, Ahlul Alm, the people of knowledge, because they're Ahlul Quran, and the meaning. It's very close. So we the, this tafsir of this this ayat, this is uh, what is known as ikhtilaf. Uh, there's two types of ikhtilaf. Uh, ikhtilaf tabad wa ikhtilaf tanawwa. Ikhtilaf tabad meaning contradictory explanations or understandings. And ikhtilaf tanawwa is ikhtilaf is a difference in gradation. So this is an illustration of those gradations, I meaning some of the salaf understood it as meaning people of not the people of knowledge in general and some understood it as specifically meaning the people of the Quran and of course the people of knowledge of the people of the Quran. Imam Sa'di mentions uh, in his tafsir about this ayat he said that Allah said to his Prophet and then he mentioned the ayat وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ إِلَّا رِجَالًا the part of the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and we didn't sin uh, before you accept men, meaning men were, the prophets were all, the NBA, they were all Rijal, they were all men. He said that he did not send from those before you Malaika, meaning Malaika were not sent as prophets, they were sent from mankind. And he said that, that they were men and they were not women. And that it was revealed unto them the ahkam and the shara'i, the rulings and the legislation. And that which was beneficial and best for the servant. That was what, that's what the revelation is for. And he said that they didn't come, that there was nothing else sent from themselves, meaning it was sent from Allah Azza wa Jal. And then he mentions the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fasal ahli dhikr. So therefore ask the people of knowledge, that's a command as we mentioned. He said, and the general generality of this ayah, he said, Wa umum hadhil ayah. He said the general meaning of this ayat is that it is a praise of the people of knowledge. And 
ilm bi kitabi la munazzal, and that the greatest form of it, the greatest form of knowledge, this ilm nafi, this beneficial knowledge, is knowledge of the revealed book, meaning the Quran. The inna Allah amara man la yalam bi ruju ilayhim fi jamil hawadith, and verily Allah commanded that those who do not know to go back to the people of knowledge relating to all of their issues, all of their, all of the issues that come up, all of the huadith, all the newly, uh, new issues. Isn't that the minhaj in Nabuwa? Isn't that the prophetic minhaj? Or is the minhaj better, ahkam wa aslam, better and more rectifying to go with these contemporary ideologies that undermine the scholars and say, hey, the scholars can't answer this question. They can't deal with evolution. They can't deal with uh, trigonometry. They can't deal with this. They can't deal with this. Or is it better to go to Ahl al-Dhikr as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded and as the Salaf al-Sali understood the meaning of this ayah? To further illustrate our point, Ibn al-Qayyum rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned about the people of knowledge and that their part of their service for Islam is cutting and destroying the shubahat, destroying the doubtful things that come to the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from external and internal voices. Ibn al-Qayyim Rahimahullah Ta'ala says in his book uh, Mudarij al-Salakim, he says, Al-Ilm had, Tarqat al Anbiya wa tarathihim wa ahlahu asabathum asabathum wa warathuhum wa huwa hayat al qulub wa nur al basair wa shifa al sudur wa riyad al aqul wa al ladhat al arwah wa anas al mutawashin مستو مستوحشين ودليل متحيرين وهو الميزان الذي به توزن الأقوال والأعمال والأحوال وهو الحاكم المفرق بين الشق واليقين والغي والرشاد وهدى والضلال به يعرف الله ويعبد ويذكر ويوحد ويحمد ويمجد وبه يهتدى إليه السالكون Ibn al-Qayyim رحمه الله تعالى said a beautiful statement about the importance of knowledge and it only goes to show that what? the importance of Ahl al-Ilm, the people of knowledge he said that knowledge is like a uh, a sharp tool it's the, the sword if you will and it is the, it is what the Anbiya, the Prophets, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, what they left behind as inheritance. And the people of it are its people and its inheritors, meaning the people of ilm, the people of knowledge are the inheritors of the Anbiya, as the Prophet sallallahu said. And it is the life of the heart, meaning knowledge, and the discerning light. And it is the cure for the heart, and the garden for the intellect, and the sweetness of the soul. And it is the evidence for those who are confused. Going back to the people who make these statements who are confused and in doubt about the religion. It's knowledge that's going to help cure that. And it is the scale at which to weigh aqwal. It is the scale to weigh statements and actions and the different various conditions. And I want to stop there. If we look at the statements of some of these contemporary du'at and people who people raise up as scholars, and you look at their statements on the scale, we don't find any precedence for them. Meaning, the, state, the Salaf used to say, Men sabaka biha the qawl. Who preceded you in that statement? Those statements of undermining the scholars. We don't have those from the Salaf al -Sari. We don't have from the ulama and the rasikhun of al-ilm throughout the history of Islam. We don't have that. Instead, they always realized the importance of the scholars. And the scholars were important, except for Ahl al-Bidah. 
So we have to weigh everyone. If you hear something from me, wait on the scale of the Salaf and see, is this, does it make sense? And do you hear that from the contemporary scholars who follow the Kitab wa Sunnah? And if not, then you discard it. Likewise, with anyone else, discard it if it's not on the scale. And then he said, it is the judge which divides between shak wal yakin, doubt and, and, and certainty. Again, very relevant for what we're talking about. Because some of the, there's many people who are in doubt. They're in doubt because they're not going back to that foundation. They don't have a foundation to stand on. This is what the youth are in, and this is what those people who study to such a level, but there's some, you know, the only Allah gives rizq of the fahm. Only Allah can give you that, that, that real understanding and know when to cut off and know when to not get into things that have no benefit, that only cause you doubt. How can you doubt the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah? It only leads to the path of kufr. It will only lead you to the path of ilhad. So it's a very dangerous path. And he said, and it is guidance and guidance and misguidance, meaning the meaning the, the knowledge of the book in the Sunnah is that which distinguishes between guidance and misguidance. And with it, you know Allah and you know how to worship Him, meaning with knowledge. And you remember him and you make him, you know, you have Tawheed. You, you actualize Tawheed through worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That only comes through Elm. Because a lot of these things, these Messiah, they only come, we only know them from Wahi, the Aqidah. Learn this Qaida. Creed is Tawqifiya. Creed is Tawqifiya. Which means that when we study Aqidah, there is no room for doubt and there's no room for change. We accept it. Whether we can explain it, if it's clear from the Book of Allah and clear from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, khalas, intaina. Well, there's no room for debating and, and reanalyzing it and trying to tear it apart or compromising it because it's the creed, it's your aqidah. This is what bonds you so it keeps you as a Muslim. That same creed, if it is uh, compromised, it can take you out of the fold of Islam. It's a dangerous path. And with it, meaning with knowledge, you praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you are with knowledge, you are guided to the uh, path of the Salikin, the, the, those people who are striving to get to Jannah. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion. So this is a humble discussion, if you will, about the importance of the people of knowledge and the importance of doing your best to ground yourself. And it's not necessarily necessary for you to get into every debate and discussion. And it's not necessary for you to listen to everyone who's speaking. I don't care where they studied and what they graduated from. If what they're saying goes against the soul, now we have some big du'at that are saying statements that are very general and very ambiguous about Christmas. This is a very dangerous thing. These people reach hundreds and thousands, if not almost maybe millions of people around the world. And if these are our du'at, this is a dangerous path. It almost sounds like the hadith of the Prophet where he said, du'at ala Abu, Abu Abu Jahannam, when he drew, drew in the sand. The Prophet ﷺ drew a line, he said, that's the Sibi Allah. And he drew Thumma Khatta ala Yameen wa ala Yasar. And then he drew one on the right and the left, and he said, Habihi Subur. Wa ala kulu sabil fiha shaitan. He said, and those are the various paths. And at the head of every path is a shaitan. So you have to be careful, a habatifillah. This is a warning for all of us to fear Allah as much as we can, study as much as we can, and be grounded as much as we can in our faith and avoid the shubahat. Don't get into debate. Don't read uh, things that are going to cause you doubt in your religion. Stick with those things which are clear. And bi'idhna Allah, you have safety. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.